Investigators from, from Britain uh, looked at the efficacy of vitamin D3, which is the naturally produced vitamin, um, on preventing uh, protein uh, excretion in patients who have diabetes and kidney disease. So many of these patients uh, were at a point where their kidneys had begun to fail, but had not failed to the same to the extent that they required dialysis. So these were people with kidney disease as a result of diabetes prior to the initiation of dialysis. And in this study, the investigators gave vitamin D3 in doses sufficient to increase the levels uh, to a particular concentration um, and showed that the people who got vitamin D3 um, had less protein in the urine and they had less uh, of a, uh, amounts of a particular substance known as transforming growth factor beta that is responsible for uh, uh, fibrosis or the development of fibrosis in the kidney. Uh, it was a small study and uh, it's uh, not entirely certain that this can be extrapolated to large uh, groups of patients, but it does suggest that among non-smoking uh, diabetics, um, there is a beneficial effect of giving vitamin D3 um, in, in preventing the progression of kidney disease or certainly in preventing an increase in protein excretion and the formation of this substance that causes fibrosis or scarring in the kidney. Now I would hasten to add that the study uh, is very small. Um, they got different results in smokers versus non-smokers which is not easily explained. Um, and um, it, the definitive tests for looking at progression of kidney function uh, were not done. Um, so I think, uh, but, but certainly the data is very suggestive of there being a beneficial effect of vitamin D3 administration in patients who have diabetes, low vitamin D levels to begin with, and um, who have uh, kidney dysfunction at the same time. Now, um, I think that when vitamin D3 is given in the amounts that were given in this study, um, the, the toxicity or some of the side effects of vitamin D are very, the incidence of those side effects is very low. So it would be safe to give amounts in the amount that was given in the study uh, without causing any side effects. Um, clearly, larger trials are needed to confirm these studies with more definitive endpoints. Uh, but I think it's a step in the right direction, uh, showing that the administration of vitamin D3 may be helpful in a subset of patients uh, who have uh, chronic kidney failure, um, in this case due to diabetes. I would caution against doing that. I think that if uh, someone has diabetes and chronic kidney disease, they should see their doctor who could then measure uh, the levels of a vitamin D metabolite in the blood called 25-hydroxyvitamin D. If the levels of that particular substance were on the low side, then under those circumstances, under supervision, administering vitamin D3 uh, would be of help uh, because it would prevent more protein from appearing in the urine and potentially more damage from occurring. The problems with giving indiscriminate uh, vitamin D uh, in doses uh, that uh, can cause calcium and phosphorus to rise is that that elevation in calcium and phosphorus can further damage the kidney um, and so this has to be done uh, under supervision 